Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. It's time for another Pokemon card design challenge, the challenge where I pick three random cards from a booster pack, and those become my prompts to design a brand new Pokemon. Just for funsies, let's see what the seven cards that weren't selected are. Er, six. Apparently this pack didn't have ten cards. We've got... Gumi, Combi, Wooper, Ball Toy, Lucky Helmet, and Sligu. The cards we'll be using are Magikarp, Porygon 2, and Mega Gardevoir EX. Interesting combination. If you're used to these Pokemon card videos, you may have noticed that intro was a little rushed. This is the old 2019 footage I hadn't released yet that you guys said you wanted to see anyway. I used to pause at different times to talk, I used to have a completely different intro, and I used to do way too many calls to action. So when this footage sat too long, I started to think it wasn't really usable in its raw state. But again, you guys wanted to see it anyway. So I'm redoing the audio entirely as voiceover, and that was an awkwardly quick intro. <laughs> if you're familiar with this series on my channel, then you know what's up. But just in case, these are unfortunately counterfeit 2015 XY Ancient Origins booster packs. I bought a box of 36 or something like that off AliExpress, and the price was too good to be true. They're very convincing cards, printed well, but they're slightly smaller than real cards, the card stock is thinner, and every single booster pack contains a 2016 run holographic card with, for some reason, a paler blue back. I reported my proof that these were counterfeit to AliExpress customer service and they did give me a 50% refund, so it's all good. They work for what we're doing and they're not getting mixed in with my real cards. I started my drawing by copying some basic Mega Gardevoir art off Bulbapedia. Then I'll be changing and adding characteristics to blend in Porygon 2 and Magikarp features. At the end, I'm going to reveal what I think this new Pokemon is called, what its typing is, and what its moveset probably looks like. I'd love to hear your choices in the comments down below, so feel free to start leaving your suggestions in the comments anytime. When we get to the end and I reveal mine, I'd love to know if you agree or disagree and what you would have done differently. That includes the design. Tell me how you would have designed this differently. You can even actually design this Pokemon mashup, post it wherever you post art, and show me a link in the comments down below. I love seeing you guys participate. By the way, I just wanted to mention my upcoming giveaway since I haven't teased that in a while. As I started promising back in January, I will be holding a big giveaway when I qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, and I knew it would be happening sometime this year. As I prepare this voiceover script, I've got less than 50 subscribers to go, but my watch time isn't quite there yet. So if you want to help this happen sooner rather than later, watch this video and my others all the way through. That would be very much appreciated and it'll help us get to that giveaway sooner. Once I'm eligible to submit my channel for review to become a YouTube partner, I will announce the specifics for my giveaway, but what I can tell you is I've been collecting a bunch of art supplies to give away. Watts. I've got some new unopened items as well as some like new tested once items in a variety of mediums. I'll also be including a small original artwork in the prize. I'm willing to ship anywhere in the world that accepts parcels from Canada. In order to be eligible to win, all you have to do is be a subscriber, be age 14 plus, and live in a country that can receive mail from Canada. That's it. Information on how to enter and exactly what all the art supply items are will be in the giveaway announcement video, which I would really like to be able to put out this summer. Help me get there and you might get some awesome goodies out of it. So here's the line art. I started with Mega Gardevoir and I've added other details. From Magikarp, we've got the Fu Manchu style whiskers and her ear fin now resembles the yellow three point fins on Magikarp. The eye shape is now much rounder like a Magikarp, but with the Porygon pupil. We'll go with Magikarp type shading on the eye. We've got Magikarp lips, 
I've added Magikarp's white fin details to the heart-shaped protrusions on Gardevoir's chest, and I've added Magikarp's hexagon scale shapes and ridges to her gloves. For Porygon 2, like I said, the pupil is definitely Porygon shape. I've added Porygon 2's tail, I've rounded out a lot of the shapes down at the bottom of the design, and I'm going to really focus on incorporating the Porygon color scheme. Time to transfer this over to my final paper. We'll be back once I've traced over to my marker paper and cleaned it up. Today I'm using Strathmore 400 series marker paper, I love this paper. It's basically express it blending card, but cheaper in my neck of the woods. Enjoy the coloring process. Be thinking about the name, type, and moveset you would assign this Pokemon. And I'll be back with my answers at the end.
here we are. This is the new Pokemon design I've come up with based on Mega Gardevoir EX, Porygon 2, and Magikarp. I'm calling this new Pokemon Gardicarp, with a Y for the second syllable to be clear that Porygon was involved. This is mostly Porygon 2 colors, including the purple we see on Porygon 2 where his translucent little bubble body parts overlap. I used purple in the underside areas and on the lips. I've also thrown in some Magikarp colors, and there's a green gradient in the hair to give a nod to the original Gardevoir design. I'm thinking Gardicarp is a water fairy dual type, and the moveset will definitely reflect that. Probably a mix of fairy and water moves for the lesser quick attacks, and I can see her charged attack being a water type. Can't you just see her using Bubble Beam? I had a lot of fun with this one. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my decisions and what you would have done differently in the comments down below. Also, thank you for your patience with the totally redone voiceover. I tried to say the same important things in the right spots, but my gesturing on screen probably didn't always match up. This is what happens when you use footage almost a year later. <laughs> Too much has changed about how I present. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left-hand side of the screen now, or if you'd like to listen to me talk about writing and bookish topics, go ahead and check out my second channel, The Westville Archives, on the right. I upload art content here twice a week, at minimum, every Tuesday and Thursday, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!